problem has going, a lot of people actually think that for you to start off in property, you need to have money. Well, it's not really true because I actually started off in property with no money at all. And today I just wanna ask to zoom in into a deal actually where I only, or should I say I have only put in a thousand rand of my own money. So actually in all the deals that I've done ever in my business, I have only done one deal where I've put in my own money. In the properties that I now co-own and manage, I now have more than, 200, more than 200 tenants that we have across four cities and more than 350 students that we have. And all of that has actually just come from me investing with only 1,000 rand. So how did it all start? Well, it all started on the deal number one, my first deal that I ever did. And bearing in mind before that, I have brought, I have brought uh, bought properties uh, with my wife and I, but none of those properties were cash flowing. And we were utilizing obviously the bank to finance that. But I want to speak to deal number one, when we actually were starting off, and we now know we have gone in into the education of property investing, and we now know how to invest. That's the most important thing. Now, deal number one was a two bed, one bath. For some of you who know Johannesburg, I bought this property in an area called Kempton Park. And in Kempton Park, uh, there are quite a few um, high rise buildings and I bought this two bed, one bath. I put an offer for 160,000 Rand. Yes, two bed, one bath for 160,000. How did I do that? I obviously negotiated, I saw the opportunity, I saw the problem and I negotiated utilizing solving the problem. And in some of my videos, I talk about how can you actually solve problems so that you can negotiate to get the right amount that you want to buy on a property. However, on this property, two bed, one bath, at that time, I was down and out. I had no money to my name. I was in debt around about 5 million or more. And, but, I'd learned the art of going out to look for property opportunities. So I continued searching for properties. I continued weekend in, weekend out. I continued during my lunchtime. I was employed at the time. And out of that, I was then be able to actually put in an offer. It was on the market for around about 380, I think it was. And I put in an offer of 160. My closing cost came to around about 50,000 Rand. So we were all in now on that property for 210,000. How did I get to 210? 160 plus 50,000. All right, so 250. It took me a weekend to actually renovate that property. And in three days time, we're done. We went in on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we we're done. Round about a week or so later on, within the same property, we already got a tenant. And we got that tenant and um, they started paying us a rent on 5,000 rand. And rents and taxes on that property together with levies were sitting on around about 1,000 rand and you do the maths. But now, I just want us to go back to, so if I bought this property for 160,000 and I put in an additional 50,000, where did I get the money? Or how did I pay? Or how did my 1,000 come into play? Because I didn't have any money at that particular time, I remember I was speaking to the estate agent and the estate agent said to me, yes, you want to put in 160,000 as an offer here. If it is accepted, how much deposit are you going to put in? At that time, I didn't have any money. I remember I was a little bit stuck and um, I called my coach and I said, coach, I think I've got a hot deal here. We can potentially sell this deal for around about 400, 450, but, I can close it 160, but these guys are looking for a deposit. What is your thoughts? And they said to me, how much money do you have? And I said, I don't have any money. He says, okay, fine. How much money are you going to have in the next 30 days? And I said, I think I can have a thousand rand. And he said to me, put in a thousand rand. On my offer to purchase, I did put in a thousand rand subject to be on acceptance. And that thousand rand is going to be available in the next 30 days. Sneaky, isn't it? But that was the reality of where I was. So I did put in an offer and boom, it got accepted, right? When it got accepted, then what happened? I literally had 30 days to come up 
with their 159,000 rand. Again, I went back to my uh, coach and this is where the power of association really kicks in because my coach has been coaching many, many students in his network. He's got a bigger network that I got and things like that. And I presented the deal to him and I said to him, dude, this is what I've got. I think this is a very good deal, but I'm only going to have a thousand rand and it's only going to be available. I'm afraid that I might, I might lose the deal. It is a good deal. So my coach went out and uh, he said to me, leave it to me. Uh, and uh, a couple of days went by and uh, a week went by and two weeks went by and I'm starting to freaking out. And at this time I am looking for investor and uh, I'd gone to school and I learned, I knew what an investor was, was about, but I, I just never worked with any investor before. So I kind of like was just asking everyone and everyone that I knew. Uh, but, you know, with what I now know now, I was asking in the wrong manner. Eventually, I think it was on the third week, my coach came by and he said to me, go and speak to this guy called John. And I went to John and we had a meeting with John. And John said, look, I want to go and see the property. We went and we saw the property. And John was like, eh, let's meet again. And thereafter, I'm like thinking, John, time is ticking. You want us to meet again? This deal needs to close. But obviously, you know, as a newbie, you're worried. As a newbie, you're like wanting to close the stuff and you're thinking that your hot deal might just go away. In this, in this time now, I'm really panicking. And um, look, this guy was a seasoned investor. He came back to me after about two to three days and says, let's meet again. I'm like, brah, why don't we just close the deal? And this time around, we did meet and out of here, he says like, I like you and I think, you know, this is a good deal. Let's go into it as a pilot, right? And I'm going to put in the entire money. Can we go in 50-50 on this deal? And I was like, whoa, are you going to pay 159,000? Obviously I was saying that in my mind. And uh, he had said he's going to pay all of it. And I'm thinking, what about the uh, renovations of uh, the closing cost of 50,000? He had also said he's going to put in everything. So I'm like, okay, I like this. Eventually we closed the deal. He transferred the money to the attorneys and boom, the deal was closed. However, let's look on the, on the flip side of why was he bringing in the money? Number one, he didn't have what I had. I had the deal, he didn't have the deal. He had the money. Number two, this guy was a seasoned investor. He had so many things going on. He didn't have the time that I had. And so from a time perspective, he said to me, look, I'm gonna give him the money. We're going to do this in a new company. And within this new company, you need to come in and do all the work. And I was like, what is all the work? And he says, well, the renovation, you need to make sure that it's done. When it's time to tenant, you need to make sure that this property is tenanted. I'm like, yeah, I can do that. So guess what? The first pilot, the first project went off exactly like that. Three days came in, I had to put in my 1,000 rand and he, his money needed to be clear, cleared out because it was coming through from another investment, things like that. My 1,000 rand, boom, I had to pay my 1,000 rand. And that is my only 1,000 rand that I've ever put in into a deal. So let's go on and conclude onto the deal. What then happened? Well, the deal, we were able to renovate it. The money came through, we paid the attorneys and then it registered into our name. And out of that, we then was able to actually put in a tenant about, about a couple of weeks after the renovations was done. And we were able to actually have a tenant and that tenant was paying us 5,000 Rand. Out of that 5,000 Rand, it was money that was coming into this company. And uh, we were sharing 50-50 with the investor. He dictated the pace, I complied, I did all the work. And we did many other deals out of that. And where he was bringing in the money, I was doing all the work. Now, having gone through in, I'm like five years into this when I'm literally doing this deal, when I'm doing this video, I have not put in any of my own money into all these deals that I've been doing. But I've had investors coming in, investing in all of these deals. And I'm of the view that if I can do it, you can do it too. But the learnings that I got out of this deal that I just want to share with you is that 
three key learnings. Learning number one is that it's not about capital. It's not about capital. Money is available everywhere. Money is available everywhere. People actually don't know, or people actually want to invest somewhere, but the people that have opportunities are very little. So if you are one of those people who are wanting to learn how to do, um, how to find opportunities, there is money. You just need to know where to knock on which doors. That is point number one. Point number two in terms of my learning was that when it's, when it's about finding opportunities, the moment you have op more opportunities on your table, you are guaranteed that you're always going to have money following because money always follows the good deals, right? People invest in good deals. And that's what I realized on this first deal of mine. And I said to myself, well, I am continuously going to be looking for good deals like this. And that's all I do. All I do is look out for good deals. The last thing is that you don't have to do everything on your own. You don't have to do everything on your own. If you look into this partnership here that I've got, I've got the guy who's coming in with the money on one side and myself on the other side. And together we are creating a symbiotic relationship where they're bringing the money, I've got the deal, and together we are making money out of that deal. And we're doing what we love to do in our own spaces. And if this is exciting to you on how I actually invested on my first deal for a thousand rand, I am sure you can do with no money at all. All you need to do is to learn how to do these deals, learn how to find these deals, and there's so plenty of them. My name is Tarai Jack. It's been great hanging out with you this, uh, on this video. And if this is something that you enjoy watching, and if there's been of value, and you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. But don't forget to subscribe. It's good having you around. Cheers. God bless. Goodbye.